Welcome to your very first lesson for calculus. Uh, right away, we're going to get into one of the three big ideas for the entire course, and it's the idea of a limit. And a limit is something that you've kind of seen before. It's just a word that you might not be familiar with. What a limit is, a limit is the y value a function approaches. Approach is going to be a big word. So a y value that a function approaches from both the left and the right side of a given x value. And what we want to think about is a big word to keep in the back of our head, behavior. We're thinking about how functions behave around given x values. So let's look at example one to get an idea of what we are talking about with this limit idea. Looking at this graph all the way on the far left, uh, the question that we've seen in the past is something like f of negative 3. We know that means to look to this x value of negative 3 and think about what the output is, think about what the y value would be that goes with it. And for us, in this example, that would be the number 4. But what we are looking at right below that, and this is read the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 3. And for that, what we're thinking about is, as we approach negative 3 for that x value from either side on this graph, what does it look like the y value is getting very close to? So what we're going to do is we're going to take an arrow and run from the left side of this x value of negative 3 along the graph. If we do that, we're going to see, getting very, very close to that value of negative 3, where it's looking like our y value is getting close to 4. Going from the right side, and again, use your arrow to go along the curve, it also looks like we are approaching a y value of positive 4. Since both sides are going to the same spot, we can say that the limit of f of x, no matter which side of this value of negative 3 we come in from, is equal to 4. So looking on the example right next to it, again, same idea. Start with f of negative 3. Now here you're going to see a difference. At negative 3, we have a hole in the graph. There's no value there. This is undefined, or does not exist. This is an abbreviation I'm going to use quite a bit right here. We don't have a point at x equals negative 3. But think about what it looks like the graph is doing around this value of negative 3. Think about this limit concept. If I start to the left of negative 3 and run along this graph, I would assume, if I were following this curve here, that I would be getting to a y value of 4. If I went from the right side, I would assume the same thing. It sure looks like both sides of this graph are going to that y value of 4. So we say the limit as x approaches negative 3 for this f of x function is a positive 4. And the point really doesn't matter. It's all about behavior around that point. So let's look at another example using the same graph but slightly different f of negative 3 in this problem, where we don't, we have a hole, but it's actually just because we've moved the point downward. So if I look at f of negative 3, the defined point there has a y value of positive 1. That limit, though, the limit as x approaches negative 3 from either side, if we were to follow the curve, we would again be led to believe that this graph would be approaching a value of positive 4. Everything around it looks like it goes to that value. So that is what this limit concept is getting us to. So let's look at two more examples that, again, look like very similar graphs. Looking at this one right here, f of negative 3 on this graph. We go to an x value of negative 3, and we find the defined point, which is right here, looking like at a y value of positive 1. But the difference on this one is, if I look at the limit as x approaches negative 3 for f of x, as I come in from the left, it looks like it's getting closer and closer to 4. If I come in from the right and I were to imagine this graph continuing, it sure looks like I'm going to get to a y value of 1. Since I'm looking at both sides of this graph and these two sides are not matching up, what we say for this limit is that it does not exist. When I look from the left and when I look from the right, I'm seeing two different pictures, two different ideas of where this function will be going to. So let's look on the last example. f of negative 3 in this last example, again, I go to negative 3, and I want to find a defined point. And I see one right here with a y value of 2. But I still have the same problems I had in the previous example. If I look at the limit as x approaches negative 3 for this function, coming in from the left, 
She looks like I would get to a y value of 4. Coming from the right, it looks like this graph would be getting to a y value of 1. Since it's different depending on which side of that x value I'm coming in from, those two sides do not match up, we're going to say that limit does not exist. Uh, definition take one. Looking right below these examples, you're going to see a very long, very confusing looking definition for a limit. And this is actually technically the mathematically valid definition for what a limit is. And so the idea that given a function f, the limit as x approaches c, which we've already seen, we've seen that notation, is a real number. If you can make your y values arbitrarily close to that real number, whatever you're calling your limit value, by getting x sufficiently close to that value that you're talking about in your limit. So that value of c, the negative 3 we saw from the previous examples. But you're not letting x equal c. That's the key thing. You're getting it close enough that it's almost there, but you got to realize that there's still two different values. And it gets you back to that common notation that we've already talked about. This definition is a little bit more drawn out than what we saw previously. And what you need to focus on is just think about what is happening to my y value as I let x get very close to some number from either side. That's If you can keep it that simple, then you're going to keep this concept simple. Box definition take one. Now expanding upon what we've seen, we can also talk about what is known as a one-sided limit. What we saw previously were known as two-sided limits. We're looking at both sides of the x value to define our limit. And a one-sided limit, it's still a y value. So a one-sided limit is the y value a function approaches as you approach a given x value. Still sounding very familiar. As you approach a given x value from either the left or right side. We focus in on one, and we don't worry about taking them both at the same time. So let's get an example of what I'm talking about here. So in this example, the limit of f as x approaches 3 from the left side is negative 1. And how we denote that from the left side is right here. Almost like an exponent, we take that number and we raise it to a negative sign. Just make sure we're not reading that as a negative 3, that is 3 from the left side. So looking at this function, as we approach an x value of 3 from the left side, here's my x value of 3. And I'm only going to worry about tracing along the graph that's on the left side of that x value. This part right here. And if I were to only focus on that side, I would assume as I move along that graph, my y values are getting very, very close to a y of negative 1. Looking at the right side, and notice our change in notation, make sure we're reading this part out. The limit of f as x approaches 3 from the right side, we're saying this one is 2. Because when I look, from the right side and trace along that, it sure looks like if I just focus on this part of the graph, I would be approaching a y value of positive 2. And notice the notation. Taking that 3 and raising it to a positive sign, again, it's not really an exponent, it's not saying positive 3, it's saying approach 3 from the right side. So let's look at a bigger example to put this all together. Notice our function f of x over here. And notice, got a lot of little parts, but they're going to move very quickly. These are very simple problems once you get used to what you're looking at. So let's look at the first one and make sure that you can read these out loud. I'm going to read them out loud, but it's a good idea to make sure as you go through any examples, read them to yourself first and make sure you understand the notation. So this first one, A, says the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of f of x equals. So I'm going to look for negative 2, which is right here. And I'm going to approach that x value from the left trace along this part of the graph. And if I am to do that, it sure looks like on this side, the y values would approach a positive 1. And if I go from the right of that same value, like I'm going to an example b, tracing along this part of the graph, it sure looks like my y values would approach a negative 2. And notice how those two values do not line up. It does matter which side of negative 2 I come in from. From the left, I'm seeing one thing. From the right, I'm seeing another. So we're going to say the overall limit, or the two-sided limit, as x approaches negative 2, does not exist. 
looking at the limit as x approaches 1 for f of x here in part d. Well, if I look at 1, here it is asking for a two side limit. So from the left and from the right, it sure looks like no matter which side I come in from, I'm going to approach this y value here of positive 1. Notice that's not where the point is, but remember, limits don't care about the point. It's behavior around the point. Part E, the limit as x approaches 0 for f of x. And at 0, and there is no drawn point over here, but we can read into it. And coming in from the left, coming from the right, this sure looks like both sides we would approach a negative 2. So let's look at the limit as x approaches 3 from the left. Finding 3 right around here. If I come into that from the left, looks like my y values are going to get close to a positive 5. The limit as x approaches negative 1 for f of x, and I'm going to say coming in from negative 1, which hits the curve right around there, is a two-sided limit. So I'm going to draw arrows into both sides of this, and it sure looks like they're both approaching the same place, and they're both approaching a value of negative 3. My limit as x approaches negative 3 for f of x which is back over here. Again, there's nothing weird happening around this point. Looks like a nice connected line. Everything's approaching the same spot at negative 3. It looks like both sides are approaching 0. And our last two parts are just thinking about function values. And that's the big thing is define points. Make sure you get the difference down between a limit and a defined point. If I look at f of negative 2, the defined point at negative 2, the y value is positive 1. Looking at something like f of 1, its defined point at an x value of positive 1 is down here at negative 2. It's been displaced. It's been moved down. So something I've already thrown out a couple times, when does a limit not exist? We've already seen one really good example, and that is when the left and right hand limits are not equal. And when we'd see this most often is in the presence of some sort of jump. Way number two, and we're going to see this in an upcoming lesson, is a vertical asymptote. Because these will be spots where we're going to have some sort of dividing line, some x value that our graph cannot cross over. That x value is completely removed from the domain, and our function is going to turn to avoid it. And the third time when you will see limits that do not exist is what's known as oscillating behavior. Now this one's very rare, but I'm going to show you a quick example of what it could look like and think kind of like a Richter scale. You might have a graph that's coming in nice and wavy, nice and wavy, and then all of a sudden just has something disastrous happening somewhere around here. The graph is moving so quickly back and forth between values that it's impossible to lock on to what the y value might be approaching. And so that sort of behavior is going to tell us that a limit does not exist. Again, very rare, but just something to keep in the back of your head as a possibility. Now looking at this next example, something that will help us put into use everything that we've talked about so far in this lesson. Sketching a graph of a function, meeting certain conditions involving function values, limits, and behavior. So we have five conditions that we have to meet. Now the first one by far is the easiest one. We want g of 3 equal to negative 1. So at an x value of 3, I know I'm going to have a point down here at negative 1. Check, that one's all set. The limit as x approaches 3 for this g of x function I'm going to make is going to be equal to 4. But we already know the function value there is negative 1, so if my limit's going to be equal to 4, we've already seen some examples where that's going to tell me my graph has to be approaching 4 everywhere else other than at 3. So maybe something like a hole is something that I can put in this spot. And I know to the left and right side, no matter where I go with this, both parts of the graph should be headed toward a value of positive 4, even though that point is displaced. I'll put a check on that one. The limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right for g of x is equal to 1. Well, if I go over to negative 2, again, I'm thinking about going to the right of negative 2. I know I want to come into a value of positive 1 as I'm drawing that graph. Now, when I get there, 
I don't know if there's going to be a point equal to negative 1. Could be a point, could be a hole. I'm going to err on the side of caution, especially since we haven't read through the other conditions, and say we have a hole there. My fourth condition, this function is increasing on the interval negative 2 to positive 3. Well, that actually works with my graph because this spot here where my limit was equal to 1 and this spot up here where my limit is equal to 4, it is going to be increasing. I just have to draw pretty much anything I want to that is moving upwards. So maybe something like this. And I have now met condition number 4. And my final condition, the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left is greater than the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right. Well, I already know the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right is going to be a positive 1. We've already set that up from our previous example. So I can make the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left anything I want to. Let's say I want to make it 3. And I can make a point or a hole. I'm going to make a point here just to kind of fill this in and put this value into the domain and say that whatever's happening off to the left, I know that the graph would look like it's headed toward a positive 3. And if I want to, I can make this do whatever I want to. I just say it's going to go down here. And I have a graph that does meet all five conditions. And another key says it was a function. So since it is a function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a nice vertical line here. And that vertical line I'm going to take and I'm going to move along this graph. And no matter where I place this, this thing does pass the vertical line test, so I know that this is in fact a function and meets all five criteria. And I'm good to move on. And for our final example, nice little true-false section. Using the graph at the right, and we've already answered questions involving getting values off a graph, so answering true-false shouldn't be too big of a deal. Let's look at problem A. The limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right is equal to positive 1. Sure looks like this part of the graph headed to negative 1 from the right would approach a y value of positive 1. That's got to be true. The limit as x approaches 2 for f of x is equal to 2. Well, if I approach 2 from the left, if I approach 2 from the right, sure looks like both parts of the graph are going to meet up if this were to keep going, and it looks like they would both meet up at a y value of 2. I'll say that's true. The limit as x approaches 1 from the left for f of x is equal to 1. Approaching 1 from the left, Sure looks like this graph will be meeting up at a y value of positive 1, and we're 3 for 3 on true answers. The limit as x approaches 1 from the right for f of x is equal to 2. Well, approaching 1 from the right, sure looks like this part of the graph would be headed to a y value of 2, and we are 4 for 4. Haven't had a false answer show up yet. Let's see what the next one looks like. The limit as x approaches 1 for f of x does not exist. I already know as I approach 1 from the left, it's approaching 1. As I approach 1 from the right, it's approaching 2. Those two sides do not match up. That limit does not exist. Let's look at f. The limit as x approaches 0 from the left for f of x equals the limit as x approaches 0 from the right for f of x. Well, as I approach 0 from the left, and if I approach 0 from the right, it shows like both of those are headed to the same point. We don't know if it gets there. We don't care. Both looks like they're headed to a y value of 0. Doesn't specify what the y value is, just says they should both be the same. That is true. And finally, the limit as x approaches 2 for f of x does not exist. Well, we've already seen earlier on that we agree that the limit as x approaches 2 for f of x is equal to 2. That limit does exist. What does not exist, if I wanted to say anything, f of 2 itself does not exist. That point is not there. Remember, the point doesn't matter. It's all about what the behavior around that x value, all about what the y values appear to be approaching. And that does it for your notes on looking at limits graphically.